and welcome to my podcast, Empowered to Thrive. I'm your host, Kareen Powell. I'm an intuitive guide, and I absolutely love helping people to heal from within so that they can create a life that they love, a life that they enjoy. We weren't meant to just tolerate and get through life. We were meant to thrive and enjoy the life we're living. Of course, we will have seasons and moments that are difficult and challenging. And the beauty of it is that we can be supported in those moments. I am here to be an aid and a guide to support you. And I hope that you will enjoy not only today's episode, but some of the past episodes if you haven't heard them yet. On this podcast, I talk about all things inner wellness. We also sprinkle in some spirituality and parenting because as a mom to three kids, parenting is a big part of my life. I hope that you enjoy the episode and that there's at least one thing you'll pull from it and start to implement into your own life. If you want to follow me in other ways, you can find me on Instagram, Kareen underscore Change Radically, or on Facebook, Change Radically. Would you do me a favor and share this podcast with your friends if you hear an episode that resonates with you? And would you also go ahead and give me a rating and review my podcast? It would mean so much to me and I would appreciate it. I hope that you enjoy the episode and that we connect. I am so excited for you to hear today's episode. I had my client and friend Mariah join me and share with you the changes that she's experienced in these last nine months or so as a result of coming alongside and working with me. She's been on her inner healing journey and it's proven very transformative. Why I'm excited for you to hear her share is because what she's experiencing is not just for her. It is for you as well. If there's anything she says that sparks an interest in you, please reach out to me. And just to give you a little bit of an idea on who Mariah is, she is a beautiful soul. She is a go-getter. She's someone who does it once she puts her mind to it. And I share in the episode how I appreciate that about her because that is how you move yourself forward. Sometimes we can't muster up something within ourselves. But Mariah is one of those people who is willing to do with what she hears. She takes action when she hears something. And you, if you've listened to me for any length of time, you know that someone after my own heart because that's how I am as well. Mariah is a mom to two boys and she and her husband recently, recently purchased a beautiful piece of property and they're enjoying farming their own land. So let's get to it. I want you to hear from Mariah herself. So enjoy today's episode. Can you share with us what life was like before you started coaching with me? So life before coaching was, I don't want to say chaotic because it wasn't super chaotic. I mean, every mom, when you have kids, it's busy and there's things that come up and you're just like, Oh, this is my life. Um, but I was more tense. So I feel like my kids were more tense, but at the moment I was just blaming it on why are my kids like this? And, you know, um, like, why does my marriage, everything just felt tense? Like, because it was me and really in my head, I'm thinking I'm calm. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm working out. I'm trying to eat good. Like I, the morning would start great. And then I'd go to bed and it was just like the mundane of starting everything all over again. And it wasn't, there was really not a lot of peace. It was just chaos all the time in the daily life. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, you know, like your marriage, I had like marriage struggles and, obviously like being a mom struggles and like I felt honestly like I wasn't a good mom because there would be more days of feeling not good versus good almost because I wasn't dealing with myself I wasn't taking care of myself I wasn't I never asked for help I never I would just this is what you when you're a mom you give up yourself like that's it um and when I finally 
realized I need to do something for me. I was like, I was very into the fitness life and I figured, okay, now I got to work mentally. Like this is not working. Um, and then once being coached by you, I learned it was okay to be uncomfortable mm. and it's okay to ask for help and feel I'm very like, you know, people pleasing in a way, but don't want to feel that uncomfortable feeling with someone doing something for me. Like I'd rather do it for them, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. but I was being coached that it is okay to feel uncomfortable and ask for help when you need it and to just let it happen. Um, like there were times when like I would want to take a bath, but I wouldn't because I knew he just got home from work. So I want him to relax. So I'm going to still take care of the kids and preoccupy them so they don't bother him. But no, he's home. It's his kids. Mm -hmm. And he never told me I couldn't take a bath. Yeah. But now I'm acting like he's telling me and he's not. So now I'm kind of resenting him. Mm -hmm. And he's just like, what the heck did I do? And then that's what causes that friction. And finally, I would force myself to take a bath. And I would last two minutes because I could hear them playing and I would feel like I have to be out there. And then you've coached me into like learning to just stop in the moment and um, just pause and like know that it is okay that you are taking a bath. Like you are making yourself feel better. So now, for instance, like last night, I literally texted him going upstairs to take a bath because I just sneak so the kids try to not follow me. <laughs> and I lock the door and I put my earbuds in and I put my phone on the little stool and I lay there and I watch an entire show like a half an hour and now I can actually like lay there and not want to get out and that doesn't happen ever before so you've taught me to like be calm in that moment and just like enjoy what's happening mm. in that moment that's awesome and before that was so hard for me and now I just like you taught me to just basically communicate like can you please take the garbage out instead of me just walking by every day and maybe he's a type of person that needs a reminder but that doesn't you taught me like it doesn't mean he's not loving you or caring about you you just have to communicate your need and then he will fulfill that need and if and then it's just a simple thing but you feel like it's not in the moment yeah so little things like that don't bother me anymore. It's not like I'm not feeling loved or safe. It's just me communicating my need to him. And then hopefully he does it. <laughs> yeah, awesome. And how about with your kids? How do you feel like doing the inner work has changed the dynamic or affected that dynamic of your relationship with your kids? I feel like obviously kids are kids and they have their days where they're sick and they're extra needy. Mm -hmm. um, but I've noticed a big difference in me, how I react to them. Um, like sometimes I would just repeat myself 10 times. I said, get down. I said, get down. I said, get down. And I now like, I, I just honestly communicate with them better. And if Luke wants, like he was, my youngest is so needy. He wants me constantly. He has to be touching me. He has to be holding me, as you know. And now, like when I do the dishes or anything, he doesn't want me to walk away from him. So I literally have been getting the kitchen chair. All right, here's a sponge. You wash with me. And there's no crying. And he's fine with the sponge and he's next to me and there's no crying. And I'm like, why didn't I ever do this? I think in my head, I just want to get these dishes done. But like, I can still do the dishes and him hold the same fork. Like it's, it was, it's just a lot. And we have our days, don't get me wrong. He's only two, but it's, I try so hard to be much better with that. And you taught me um, once, maybe he just really needs because he sleeps in his own bed and my oldest doesn't. So maybe he needs that more closeness. Um, excuse me. So every morning when he wakes up, I go in there alone. I sit on the floor and I put my head on his little bumper thing and I go, how'd you sleep? And then I just like rub his back and he says, good, can we go outside? And then he kind of like wakes up happier and he knows now, like when he's ready to sit up or like get out of the bed, then I'll get up with him. 
I don't really rush him out of the room unless like we're really are in a hurry. We have to go somewhere. Okay, hurry up. We got to go. And I'll just do it for like a second. But now like then when we go downstairs, it's more calm. Like the day starts more calm mm. and he might cry if I walk away or do whatever. Um, but I've just noticed like they've been playing more together by themselves for longer periods of time where I'm like, are they okay? What are you doing up there? Like, and they've always played together, but I feel like now they have more of a piece of security. Like, okay, she's right. Like, I do feel like they feel safer maybe and not as tense because I'm not as tense. Mm -hmm. So that's, that has helped a lot. And now whenever they're like crying about something or they're mad that I won't get them French fries after they've had them, you know, Jackson's on a French fry kick. And I'm like, I love you and I hear you, but we're not getting French fries today. Like, that's like my new thing I say to them. And then the crying kind of just, and then I don't respond. Like you've taught me also, you don't always have to respond to something. You can, I, I love you and I hear you. We're not getting them today. We're in the car, we're driving, like you can cry and the crying will just, it'll get loud and then just, and he'll just start looking out the window. Like he like realizes, I'm hoping like, okay, she heard me. She knows I want the French fries, but she said no. Yeah. So I guess I'll stop crying. And I just learned to listen to them. I can hear you. I always tell them, I hear you and I love you, but we're not going to do that. We're not going to hit. We're not going to do this. So that's really helped a lot. That's awesome. Wow. So I got to say though, about you, you, you're getting these amazing results, but you're very willing to apply yourself because what you're talking about doing with, with your kids, I feel like we touched on that one time, maybe minimally, but you ran with what we talked about and you started implementing it. And now here you are, or I don't know, a few months later and you've mm-hmm. got, got these results So to anyone listening, I just want to reinforce, like you're getting the results, but you are putting action to our conversations. You don't just sit Mm -hmm. there and like hear, ask your questions, hear my feedback. You do something with what you hear. And this is phenomenal because this is the good thing is it's not just you or me who can get these results. It's any of us who put action to what we hear about, you know? Exactly. Yeah, and it's so, not easy. And there's there's days that go by where I'm like, oh, and then I literally will stop. And as I'm hugging, I'm like, okay, he probably just wants you to hold him. Just all right. What am I trying to do? Laundry. Okay, here, fold the towel. Yep. Nope. Just sit right next to me. Fold yep. the towel. Fold it. Th- oh, thank. And now with his new thing, he always goes, I help you. I help you. And I'm holding the basket and bringing it. I'll help you. Now he wants to help all the time, which is fine. I I think I get more frustrated when it's like, you're trying to hurry. But then I try in my head really hard to just like, he just wants to be with you. Like, just calm down. It's going to be okay. (laughs) He wants his mom. You're his mom and he wants you. Right. So it's been a lot, a lot better. Um, He still is a (laughs) crybaby, but like he... Like for instance, he likes to go on the computer now at night. We let him go on the computer on the kids too, but he looks at tractors and he wants me to sit in the room with him. And sometimes I would want to go like lay in bed or go lay on the couch, but now I just get a blanket and a tea or a glass of wine and I go sit in there and I watch my show with my headphones and he'll look back, you in here with me? And I'm like, yep, I'll stay in here. He, I think he just wants that closeness. Yeah. So it's more of compromising like okay he wants this what do I need to get done let's get it done um you've also taught me you don't have to have your house perfect every day (laughs) and I I mean that by Mm -hmm. I used to stress sitting on the couch of what needed to be done and like kind of like taking a bath just sitting and relaxing and I would really have a hard time and my brain would just be going and going and going and now I had to force myself Mariah just sit down and watch a show and I started actually crocheting again because of you because I'm like okay this will help me sit relax my mind but also keep my mind busy because I'm moving my hands and now I don't have to crochet unless I want to and I can sit on the couch and there can be toys on the floor and my kids don't care if the toys are on the floor and they're happy 
and my husband doesn't care if the toys are on the floor and it's like I've learned to just it's okay like you're with your family and we're having this time I don't want them to remember me as like the nagging mom who always needs everything perfect because life is not perfect so you've taught me to practice like don't clean that tomorrow like just let that be if, if you have to make your bed make your bed but don't clean up the toys in the living room tomorrow like let them clean them up Thursday like Thursdays we clean the living room on Fridays we're gonna do this like and now it's really helped me like like yet last night we all cleaned the house today it's picked up and now I'm not gonna deep clean like that again until next week like it's okay to not have your house perfect all the time mm -hmm. and we've had more time I'm outside with them more we're doing our, we're started our gardening and we do it together. So it's just, I feel more present most times, like, yeah. which is so nice. Right. Yeah. That's awesome. And you're talking about a lot of ways that you're becoming more present with yourself and integrating back into your body, like being able to sit in stillness or being able to, to see something that needs mm -hmm. to be done and not take action immediately because you realize that's not what I should do. So are there practical ways mm -hmm. you helped yourself reintegrate back into your own skin to feel safe within your own body? I honestly, um, like in, in the moments when I would just sense myself getting up, there was even times where I would get up and then I'd be like, what am I going to do? Like, just sit back down. I would honestly just stand there as I'm standing and I would just take like three deep breaths. Mm. And sometimes I, I don't know why, but like, I just, I always feel like my shoulders are tense. So I would just kind of like put my hands on my shoulders and go down my arm and be like, all right, just sit down. It's all right. And then I would just, I would like feel the tension leave. I always get it like in my neck. So I would just like mm -hmm. feel the tension leave. Or if I really felt anxious or something, I would just go and do like a stretch on the floor in the playroom with the kids and then like try to relax. Mm -hmm. But um, really like focusing in on just my mind and be like, okay, what's the worst thing that's gonna happen if this isn't clean? nothing, <laughs> nothing's going to happen. And is the president coming to look in your living room tomorrow? No, like it doesn't matter. You have boys and you're, they're, they're smiling. They don't care about that. Do I like my house a certain way? Of course I do, but it's not going to hurt me to have it a mess for a day. So I just slowly have been telling myself it's not lazy. It's just prioritizing things differently. Mm -hmm. Like I would be, I would feel like I'm being lazy if I'm not cleaning, mm -hmm. but I'm not being lazy. I'm being, I'm choosing to be more present and I'm not lazy. I'm just, if I, if my, di my dishes are done every night, if, as long as the dishes are done and there's, to I don't care about the toys anymore. It's just, I haven't cleaned the playroom since April 9th for his birthday <laughs> his birthday party was the last time I'm not I'm like I don't I'm not gonna do this yep. so it's just let them be boys and let them play and I just I just try to keep telling myself like you're safe you're okay like just take a deep breath sit down read a book go sit in the playroom like and be with them and just try to like not stress about there could be worse things than your toys on the floor. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I, I feel like you teaching me to like tell myself that and just feel like, okay, my chest is kind of hurting a little bit or like if something comes up and I start to feel anxious, just take a minute, take a deep breath. If I'm having like a tense conversation with someone like family member or anything, like you don't always have to respond. You don't have to have the last word. Mm. If you know the conversation is going to escalate just end it there and you you're okay and you're safe you're home like you don't have to continue a conversation that's not going to be healthy for you because it's it that doesn't matter like your mental state matters more than just having the last say in a conversation sometimes so sometimes when that happens I'll just like I said just all right just take a deep breath 
yeah. you're safe they're safe okay i'll call you later love you bye and that's it you don't have to keep doing things all the time yeah yeah that's good because you're you're changing the story the narrative in your own mind over some of these things and that is very empowering to choose what perspective we're going to have to choose what narrative we're going to tell ourselves when you talked about no i'm not lazy it's okay mm -hmm. to leave these items where they are it's okay for me to do this thing for myself right now because we we either decide to believe we're lazy or that taking breaks is necessary for our mental physical and emotional well-being mm -hmm. so i love i love that because you're talking about the body piece where you're connecting through breath and through touch with yourself, like you're, you're rubbing your arms. I mean, these, these are ways where we're connecting again with ourself, right? We're feeling into, oh, oh, is my skin cool right now? Is it hot? Like we're, we're noticing mm -hmm. what's going on. And then you're, you're also working on the mind piece by countering the intrusive thoughts with something that's more positive or loving. And I think that's really fabulous and a credit to you that you have put so much effort in because it's been less than a year that I first started seeing you. Yeah. And here you are talking about several different changes and you haven't even seen me like week by week, just for anyone listening. You've just seen me here and there mm -hmm. for sessions. And yet you're talking about a lot of progress. So good for you. Well, it's because of you. And the first time I honestly realized um, like my shoulders was um, in one of the group sessions, we were doing inner child. And I, I understand the concept of inner child, but I didn't understand how to like really, like, what am I just talking to myself? Like, I didn't understand how they get deep into that. And you walked me through an instance of um, when I didn't feel safe or when I felt like people were, I forget what the question was, but I remember not feeling safe as a child or something or want, not wanting to cry because I have a hard time with the crying, which I'm still working on. If I feel it, I try to just like relax my face and just like mm -hmm. not hold it in, but it hasn't like bursted out yet, but we're getting there. Mm -hmm. But um, I remember it would be in like a school setting and you literally told me, okay, like, if you see yourself, like, envision yourself sitting in the desk, and I'm like, okay, and I can see it, and then you said, okay, what would you tell her, and I literally was like, I'd put my hand on her shoulder, and I felt that mm -hmm. as I said that, like, mm -hmm. I felt someone behind me as I was saying it, and I was like, this is what she's talking about, and that's the first time I felt my shoulders just go down, and I'm like, okay, so like, that's why when I feel something, I kind of just like tap my shoulder and just like, I'll go like, like I'll pinch it or something and just be like, it's fine, like it's fine. And that's the first time it clicked for me. Like, okay, it's not really just, it is about talking through yourself through something, but it's more like envisioning an instance when you felt that way. Yeah. Like, okay, I feel this way, but when did I feel this way before? And like really taking, that's when you've taught me, like, that's when you take the work, like think, you're feeling insecure. Okay. What time have you ever felt insecure? And like, just pausing for a minute and just thinking, really thinking about it for five minutes and then just be like, okay, like, all right, I got through that. And then you continue on your the day and it might happen 10 more times from something else, but it's okay. And I, I'm trying to teach the boys, like Luke always cries and I'm like, it's okay to cry. It's like, or if they fall, you're hurt. I'm trying to really you've taught me as I see how you are as a mother and everything, like I'll, I keep telling them, it's okay to, you're mad, you're mad that he took that. All right, you can be mad, but we're not gonna hit. Mm -hmm. Or, oh, you're you're angry at me because I said no. All right, you could be angry at me, but the answer is no. So I'm trying to let them know, like I hear you and you have a right to feel that way. And I've noticed more as you hear, and it's not judging any other mothers or anything. I'm just saying like, I can hear, you know, family or people at the park, like, oh, stop, stop crying. You're fine. And now that bothers me when people say you're fine. I don't, and it's not that I'm 
being judgmental at all but I'm like like I've never I've 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 said that a hundred times and now I I'm really trying to be like like if they fall oh I do say like it's okay I'm right here what's the matter you hurt your knee does it hurt okay that's okay yep it hurts okay but I try not to make them you know if it just that really bothers me now when I hear people say things right (laughs) Right, because it's so important to allow emotions to be expressed, to validate people's emotions. And you're doing a beautiful thing by saying, you can be mad, but don't hurt. It's not okay to hurt him. Like you still Mm -hmm. have a limitation and a boundary, which children, which we all adapt to well, but you're also saying the expression of emotion is perfectly okay right now and normal. So yes, I mean, I also have a hard time, of course, when I hear people making it seem like someone shouldn't have a certain feeling or, Mm -hmm. you know, sometimes I'll find with one of my kids and this child is a lot like me. And actually I can see that. And I think sometimes that makes it a little bit harder, but the more that I've grown to love myself and to heal my inner child, it actually helps me to love the child who's like me because I can see myself through Mm -hmm. different eyes, but I have to be careful to not minimize that child's emotional experience because it can seem like too big sometimes. And I'm like, yeah, okay. All right. Like we're blowing this out of proportion, except to them, it feels legitimate. Mm -hmm. And, but again, I see it as a reflection of what I used to do or what, what was taught to me. Like people taught me that big emotions weren't okay. Like not that big, come on. You can have certain emotions, but not too big. Exactly. And so then I started believing that Mm -hmm. and I've had a workout of that, but I see sometimes I still have a tendency (laughs) to want to like say do the same thing like come on let's well I do that my oldest will keep crying after something and like now it's become a fake cry in my opinion like okay there's no more tears why are we and I'm like listen you've cried a long time you still have more in there and then like he'll laugh or something because I'm like I don't want to tell him to stop but I'm like all right like (laughs) you're perfectly fine now like you know he's like half watching tv half crying so uh, (laughs) you're fine Right. So then, then you're being the loving wise adult who's helping him return to joy, which is also important to allow emotional expression and then to help someone return to joy because we need both. And we need both modeled to us where somebody Mm -hmm. sits with us in our pain and then they help us get from that painful place back to a joyful spot. So what you're doing is good. Like you're, you're not, you're, you're saying it to him, you're phrasing it in a way that isn't you phrased it in a beautiful way. Yeah, you, not minimum. Yeah, I'm just I'm like, you got more? Oh, geez. Right, because then he, like, he okay. even laughed, you know? Like, you were mm-hmm. able to help him get to that point where he's, like, able to, like, kind of shake it off, which is good, because there is a balance. There's a balance when we get stuck in negative mm-hmm. emotions and we don't have anyone help us return to joy. That's detrimental. So it's this beautiful balance of, embracing the emotions and then Mm -hmm. coming to that place where we can say okay and now I want to be able to feel the sunshine on my face like I sat under the rain cloud I felt that cold rain Mm -hmm. and I don't want to stay there now so exactly I love it and you you've taught me that like by when I do try to think of things to say like that is because you taught me like like you just said, like sometimes your perspective of something isn't someone else's, like that's their belief. That's how they are seeing what is happening right now. So it's helped me, like I say that to my husband all the time, because he's more like, all right, man up, let's go, come on. And um, I'm like, that's not how he sees it. That's how you see it. Just kind of like, let him get through. And then like, sometimes, so even if he thinks like, I'm being silly or, oh, geez, here she goes. She's given in to him or something. And I'm sometimes he'll just walk away. Like, cause I think maybe he realizes 
excuse me, that's how he sees it. And now in relationships, like family or friends, if they see something their own way, I'm just like, I could say my opinion. I'm not going to not, I'm one to just say things. So I might say my opinion, but then it, when I like the conversation ends, I'm like, that was their view. Like, that's how they believe that happened. Right. Yes. Yeah. And that is a really good point you're bringing up because you're not minimizing their experience or their perspective, but you're also allowing yours to be yours. Mm -hmm. You're not, you're not having to change your perspective always based off of theirs. So yeah, and that's helped me a lot because I'm more like, no, this is what went down. And then they're like, no, this is what went down. But then I might, we might start that way, but then I, in my head, I'm like, okay, that's how they see it. Oh, well, they told me and I said mine. So that's it. Like, you, there's no point you're going to argue with someone when this is the way they see it. And that's the way you see it. Is this something that's really going to affect your life? You're just talking about stories here. You know, like if you're talking to your mom about a story and she sees it one way and you see it another, you're just talking about a memory or a story. It's not affecting my life from now on. There's no point in continuing a conversation to try to change their view. That's how they viewed it. And I think I struggled with that before. Like I wanted them to see my view. And they're trying to make me see their view. And it's like, we both have a view. We're looking out two different windows at the same scenic view, but there might be a pole in your way and there might be a billboard in my way. We are seeing the same picture. It's just, we're seeing it a little bit differently. So I just try to really, when it starts to escalate talking to anyone, just try to think, okay, this is not how they see it. You you see it your own way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So what would you say to someone listening who feels like they're in a place where they're not very satisfied with their life? They're not experiencing a lot of inner joy, inner peace, and what would you say to them? I'd probably just say we've all been there and we're all going to be there again. (laughs) It's just a constant roller coaster, really. And you have to just wake up one day and take a really deep breath and just like find someone that you can confide in and that can help you positive. Like, I feel like you were that person I needed at that time to positively and give me tools. Okay, take deep breaths, feel your arms, you know, talk it out, journal, stretch, like do these things, um, and have someone that you can go to and talk to and say, okay, I'm really struggling today. Like this happened different than yesterday. What did I do wrong? What can I fix from that? Because if you don't, you can't do it alone sometimes. And like you said, you're just giving me the tools. I have to do the work. But if you don't have someone giving you the tools, you're going to look at all this stuff on the floor and think of, well, where's the tools? How am I putting this together? You know, you have to have the instruction manual. I guess you would call you the instruction manual. And then when, how many times you don't follow the instructions and it's upside down and backwards or you miss the screw. So when you have something to follow, it just makes it a little bit easier Mm. and it makes you not feel alone because you like, and then you don't feel like I've never felt embarrassed or judged and I've learned so much to be uncomfortable for a split second and that it's okay I've reached out to friends that I haven't even talked to in so long and a new friendship is blooming and it's just I I'm doing things out of my comfort zone in that uncomfortable moment saying something nice to somebody because it might make me feel weird inside but just just do that because life is too short to be sitting in this uncomfortable, miserable state. It's not, you're going to have days, of course, where you're sad and tired and you didn't sleep and your kid was sick and you're like, oh, geez, I got to go on with the day. But then there's another day and you just, you start fresh that next day. But knowing you have somebody to talk to or to give you tools on how to get through it, it's only going to make it that much easier instead of trying to do it on your own. Mm -hmm. 
So I would just say, find someone that you can be comfortable with and really do what's uncomfortable. Yeah. Because then it won't be uncomfortable anymore. (laughs) Right. It gets easier over time. It truly does. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. I second that. And I'm really proud of you for all the work you've put in. And I'm very happy for the results you're getting and for the things that are to come. But just like sitting with what you've experienced, it's really, even for me to hear it, it's super exciting because I'm like, wow, like really all this is, <laughs> is this, 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 this is sustained. This isn't just, oh, things started changing for you yesterday. Mm-hmm. Like I'm hearing you talk about some things that we've talked about months ago and I'm like, oh, it's sustained. That's so mm-hmm. wonderful. So I'm really happy. It's coming that. along. It's a day-to-day thing. <laughs> a day to, oh, don't I know? You're right. The ups mm-hmm. and the downs, like you said a couple different times, that's very honest. That's very real. There are the ups and the downs. But if you can experience the moments that are beautiful, the moments that you do feel happy and at peace, it's worth it. Because exactly when we know we're living without that, even though we're always going to have hard moments, it is so necessary to be able to experience the joyful, peaceful moments. And, and those come to us through doing the inner work and through changing our patterns. And exactly. You, I think that's what kept me going too, is because you like, for instance, with my youngest, he was just, you know, wanting me so much. And as a mom, you just want to be like, I need five minutes myself. But when I started to like, actually take the time and do the tools that you taught me to do with him, I would see the joy in what was going, like what was happening when it gets hard again, it's a little bit easier to deal with that moment because you already know what you can do to make it calm down. So when it happens, you're not as tense. Like you might get tense, but you're not as tense because you're like, I know what I have to do now. I have, you know what? I probably did not spend as much time with him this morning as I should have, or I probably, you know what? I didn't make involve him in doing this. So he's extra cranky. And I'm not saying blame yourself, but you know, when you didn't do the right things, you see an outcome. So it's, you're, you're not as hard on yourself. Like, why is he like this? It's like, oh, well, because I didn't do this. I should have done that. And my day would have probably went better. And then you wake up and you're like, I'm going to try harder today. And then it's like, you, you know what to do. It makes it easier in the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Knowledge is power. You're right. Exactly. So All thank right. you for everything you've done. <laughs> Yes, you're welcome. My pleasure. It really is my pleasure. We've come to the end. What did you think about what you heard? I hope that there's something you pull from today's episode and start implementing it into your life. Create the change that you want to see, the change that you hear about. You have the opportunity to transform your life. And I'm ready to link arms with you and to help and guide you to the life that you want to live. If you resonated with what you heard today and it touched you, would you share it with your friends? Would you also go ahead and rate my podcast and write a written review? It would mean so much to me. I hope that we'll connect, whether it's for a session or just to connect because I enjoy meeting new people. You can find me on Instagram, Kareen underscore Change Radically, or on Facebook, Change Radically. You can also always email me, Kareen at ChangeRadically.com. If you have thoughts, questions, or anything that you just want to talk about, send me an email. I hope that you have a wonderful week, but no matter what your week is like, in the moments that are quiet, maybe it's when you pillow your head at night, or when you're driving in the car or taking a walk, or maybe it's going to be in the midst of the chaos with your children or or the craziness of work. I hope that you'll remember how significant you are, that there is meaning and value to your life, and that I, for one, am so glad that you're alive. Catch you again next week.